Eddie Ward Park is a relatively small public open space located in the inner eastern Sydney suburb of Surrey Hills, which has a population of 15,828 and an area of 1.2 km2, according to the 2021 Australian Census. Eddie Ward Park is only one kilometre southwest of the Sydney Central Business District and is surrounded by mainly residential buildings on its eastern and western sides. With the Surrey Hills Light Rail Station situated on its northern side, it provides direct access to the Sydney CBD and the eastern suburbs as well as directly connecting to the rest of the Sydney Transport Network. It is proclaimed as a good spot for health and fitness and to enjoy the outdoors by the City Council. The region the park is in has had a history of being a residential area which is still reflected today as the park generally exists to benefit the community it's in whether it's for locals using it as a thoroughfare or place to rest, relax and exercise and out of the way from most tourist parvings. The initial area that encompassed the park used to be a large sand hill known as Strawberry Hill and ownership was in the hands of Thomas Horton James in 1832 who divided it into the lots in an attempt to sell villas with unimpressive results. The Building Act in 1838 is what ultimately led to this park and its surroundings today, indirectly as a wide ban on timber houses, which caused smaller investors and owners to build what was actually outside the city limits at the time to escape the regulations. After another housing scheme undertaken in the 1950s, the park was bought by the council in 1963 and named after Eddie Ward, a member for East Sydney from 1931 to 1960. Most of the interactions in the park, aside for those using it as a passageway, involve local visitors who are using the park for recreational activities, ranging from sitting and socialising to improving personal fitness and often their pet dogs. The space acts for its intended purpose for the community of being a backyard for Surrey Hills. For observing and analysing human activities, we refer to three main methods, including mapping of people dwelling patterns and social interactions, analysis of user-generated social media data, as well as observations of technology, human and world relations. Using instances of videos and time lapses from an area that surveys the majority of the park, we were able to collect data about the clustering of people and their social behaviours and their social-digital relations from multiple days. This resulted in different maps. The first map is on a damp and overcast day at around 2.19pm, which is the post-lunch period on a low comfort weekday. Most of the people are either passerbys or seated on some of the few park benches, either watching the scenery or the dog walkers. The main category of people who lingered in the grassy area between the paths of the park are the dog walkers. Most of them end up socialising with other dog walkers or even just standing socialisers that come up to see the dogs. As seen in the second diagram, there are a deceptively large number of people of the passerby category passing through the park in a 15 minute time span in the post lunch period despite low numbers at any one time. The vast majority are just regular walkers paving to and from the light rail, mostly either along the paths on the right and on the left with some shortcutting through the grassy areas. The vast majority of walkers in the park are not using the phones, with under 10% using them while walking. Often they are simply holding things, trying to look at the displays as they walk to the light rail station, or even just holding the phones in the hands but not really using them, and instead looking around the park at the scenery or at other people. Very occasionally, runners late to the light rail appear. In terms of the very few lingerers over that same time period, the aforementioned dog walkers are one prevalent half while the sitters make up the other half with very low levels of phone usage. On a different weekday during a lunchtime period of around 12.20 on a sunnier day, the weather and timing both contribute to a noticeably higher number of lingering park users. With drier ground, more groups of sitters are enticed to not just sit on the park bench, but also a section of the grass to socialise, combined with the dog users. The concurrent number of people at this time in the time lapse already rivaled that of the entire lingering tally of the last filming period. Passerby traffic has not significantly changed, being more related to the function of the light rails than anything else. While there is a low usage of modern mobile technology and internet in the park, that doesn't mean people aren't generating their own user-generated content and engaging with the space via technology. 
This is seen on social media like the Instagram location ID tag of the park, where the kinds of pictures being uploaded are intensely community oriented, often being pictures from locals at community events and activities or just group photos. The Instaloader package was imported and used to obtain 157 relevant images pertaining to the park's location ID on Instagram. Running the images through the data mining tool Orange, we were able to sort these images into rough clusters. The first cluster shows pictures with vans at the park, making up 60 of the images, almost all of which show pictures of the people and recipients of charity organization Orange Sky, which holds free laundry service to help the homeless, with the occasional picture showing the service provider the Bill Cruz Foundation, which captures Eddie Ward Park as a place for the local community. The second cluster showed 55 images, mainly made up of group photos and some close-ups, even capturing some of the orange sky photos which were placed here instead of the band cluster. The cluster further emphasizes this kind of space Eddie Ward Park is to the community, which is a place to meet with others and come together with high diversity. The last two clusters make up the remaining photos, containing pictures where the park scenery is dominant and mainly pictures of isolated people or animals, which more closely represents the majority of the park's day-to-day -day use outside of community meetups to exercise in the scenery and dog walking. Post phenomenology as a contemporary mediation theory pushed by Don Ivey that technology mediates actions between us and the world. Post phenomenology in its essence is interested in how we as humans interact with the world and how ever changing technology mediates that. His mediation theory involves key categories of human technology relations and is a useful way to view how technology is influencing how we interact with other people and the environment. In Eddie Walk Park, despite the low mobile phone usage, the category of embodiment relations is still seen in the small percentage of people using the phones to communicate where the person forms a union with the technology to then interact with the world through words, images or even sounds through the vastness of the internet in situations where previous technology could not. Hermeneutic relations, where technology's representation of the world by having in the form of data read, are quite prevalent in the park area compared to other areas and communicate the values and experiences of the users of the park. First, there is the visual information of the screens and signs of the nearby light rail station showing times and locations that people are going through the park to access or disembark from. Secondly, there are impromptu posters normally concerning missing or found pets taped to several streetlights, attracting attention from onlookers in an unspoken dialogue with the world through an admittedly primitive for the time but still functional technology. Finally, there are a number of background relations with technologies unobtrusive to our consensus perception most of the time, while still helping maintain and augment Eddie Ward Park, the streetlights which light up most of the popular parks, the noises of the nearby Opal card readers, and an unusual example of rat control and monitoring devices that all serve as technologies to provide context to the human experience, whether it's lighting the park at night, providing a passive sense of security, reassurance that someone's payment of public transport went through or the reassurance that disease-spreading pests are being controlled respectively. These technology relations reinforce the values and behaviours of the park's users, a spot to relax, move through, to and from public transport, and a spot to meet people and animals in a local community.